So first and foremost, just thank you. Thank you for making such a lovely and grounded love story out of the COVID chaos of the last two years. Thank you. Thank Talk you. about Lemonade from Lemons. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is your first full-length feature that you wrote as well as directed and starred in, yes? Yes. Can you talk a little bit about how that worked? Um, well, I, I did have help. I mean, well, first of all, when I did All We Had, I worked very closely with the writer. And so I learned a lot about what works and what doesn't work. Um, and when I'm working with actors, I like the freedom to improvise and find maybe different lines to express the same thing in a more interesting way or a more grounded way. Mm -hmm. um, for this, um, I feel, I mean, in the beginning of lockdown, I was watching a lot of films and just films that were really comforting to me that I knew the ending and films I had grown up on. And I started talking to my friends who are in this industry and, and we're like, are we ever going to go back to work? And like, <laughs> And we were all being told the same thing, which was, uh, well, if you if you write something in a contained space, maybe you can do something like that. And this person's doing this. And, and then you're like, they're doing what? <laughs> How'd they do that? So I decided, um, well, what if you just have a small cast and mm -hmm. kind of this sort of concept? Um, and then I reached out, like I wrote a draft and I reached out to a friend of mine who writes movies all the time, Dito Montiel. Nice. And um, he is so generous and supportive. And and he's like, this is really great. Go in this direction, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I had like friends that gave me tips <laughs> for sure. I mean, love story. That's the perfect way to address the kind of holy terror of this moment. Because it was, I feel like a lot of people have these stories. <laughs> yeah, I well, I remember... Yeah, like a month in hearing people were falling in love or they were breaking up. Yep. And I just thought, wow, um, I don't want to see that movie because the world is already. Yeah, you, you have know. enough lemons. Exactly. Let's, 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 let's put a little hope out there right. because even we shot this a year after lockdown and like when the um, vaccines were starting to come out mm. and people, we were all still sort of like can you trust anything? Like there is just still a lot of fear as there is today. And it was like, I, I want to kind of put something visually beautiful and joyful. Which reminds me, I absolutely love the look and feel of this film. It's both upstate and on those empty New York streets. I mean, it was, it was kind of a relief to have that captured. I realized is there have been other COVID movies already and COVID shows, but I feel like that silence on the streets was something that you captured so beautifully. I didn't realize that lockdown was already over when you shot, actually. Yeah. So it was um, it was a little tricky. I mean, we we had to use Brooklyn a lot mm -hmm. for Manhattan um, because it was and just time of day to get that emptiness. Mm -hmm. um, did you did shoot in this neighborhood at all? No. All right, just check in. We could really make it local. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, we, I shot a movie called Rare Objects right in this neighborhood huh? last that, fall. Oh, okay. So I was right on Lafayette. Um, but like the when um, Jim was riding his bike over the Williamsburg Bridge, mm -hmm. that was at 5 a.m. So we <laughs> could get nobody, you know, so it looked empty. That was exciting. Kind of gorilla. Yeah. It was. Um, well, how much... Uh, did this being an explicit like how much did this being explicitly New York movie factor into your choices about shooting and about writing this? Well, it, it was I think because when lockdown happened, I was here and I I, I had the experience of just being in Soho and like Wednesday, everybody was walking around and Thursday and then like slowly it just got emptier and emptier. And then you go by your favorite restaurant on Monday and it's, there's like nothing, it, it, it just. And then like a week later, it doesn't exist anymore. Hello, story exactly, of COVID. Exactly, exactly. And I remember talking to a really good friend of mine and she, and she she's like, yeah, it's cool. She's like, I mean, this goes on for months. I'm gonna go crazy, but it's fine for now. We're, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm just enjoying it too. Yeah, it's fine. And then it was like, oh my God. God. So was it like month two that you started writing or did was it uh, red yeah. baking before then? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much 
bread ba- uh, bread making and uh, I was watching movies like Manhattan, Moonstruck. Oh, that's, um, that's so interesting because that's what I was going to, and I'm sure people in the audience saw that too, but I felt like some of my favorite 70s and 80s New York City movies are, um, There's, there, it's not derivative, I just felt that influence. Um, were there other ones as well? Moonstruck especially. Yeah. That was, I mean, that really like, when when it was getting hard during the pandemic, you just put that on. You're like, how many times did you watch it? Probably ten. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. That that breakfast scene just never gets old. <laughs> Always Cosmo. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, Are there other ones? Uh, well, Diane Keaton is one of my favorite actresses, mm-hmm. and um, just. I want it. I mean, I I always look at her performances. So I mean, definitely Annie Hall. Um, and trying to find that quirkiness. I mean, there's you you can't do it like Diane, but um, just I I love their relationship in that movie. So just having that kind of in the back of our heads. I can't believe it's it's really one of my notes here. Is you? I, sorry to read my own notes, but you have the screwball vulnerability of Diane Keaton in this film. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I could really, and I feel like, you know, that's one of the joys to me about watching you direct yourself, actually, is that I've never seen that particular, I mean, you're always wonderful, but I've never mm-hmm. seen you let yourself off the leash of the Diane, in Be So Diane Keaton before, and I, you really nailed it. It's a modern Diane, Ke- Diane Keaton vibe, especially in the Jim Sturgis scenes, I think. In the what? In the, did I just call him that? That's right. Oh, yeah. the Jim Sturgis Yes, scene. yes, sorry. Thank you. Well, I, um. What was it like to work with him? Oh, Jim was great. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a delight. Uh, we we met over Zoom, and I I mean I I was hoping he would say yes. He did, and he was just very collaborative. He had a lot of ideas about Charlie, and I loved what he brought because he just has this warmth that um, is is really special, and um, mm. and we we had a great time. I mean, he really we were all in this small space and um, my production designer and I were kind of in charge of doing the costumes um, as well. And <laughs> we didn't really mention that until all the actors were there. And did you just say like, bring some extra things. I did. I did. <laughs> and, and Jim really like day one, he was like, Oh, I get this. And so he would be like, um, this is my shirt for this scene. And then this is the same day. So I'm going to like, and I was like, oh, that's right. It is. It is. So he sort of, we were all kind of doing it together. Um, But he was great. And when we did the karaoke, the song that we got cleared was not awesome. And he's like, he's like, you, we can't, this is, and I was like, I know, but just, we just have to get the shot. Like, we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do. And and then he like (laughs) 10 minutes later, he's like, played me a song. He's like, this could be cool if you laid it over and it happened to be a friend of his and Mm. that's the song we used and i was like jim because i i i wouldn't have found it on my own so he you know he really helped out a lot and beyond what his performance no there was a i mean he's always wonderful but there was a new level of he always plays very messed up people i feel like because he has this gorgeous vulnerability there's always such there's a rawness that's almost ragged and you managed to find a he's the stabilizing energy in this a little bit i really love that you brought that out in him i think he probably felt like he had to be just to exist like he was the stabilizing energy on, <laughs> on the set, set. <laughs> Okay, which reminds me, this is just a sidebar, but he, I realized watching this, I'm like, wow, you found a British actor, actor who doesn't have an annoying American accent, which is actually a smaller category than is acknowledged. So I kudos, know. Katie Holmes. Um, let's, can we talk about casting in general? I mean, hello, Melissa Leo, Jim Sturgis, like Derek Luke, Zosha Mamet, Becky Ann Baker, who's such a New York City gem, and I feel like doesn't, o- I mean, she doesn't always get her due. Well, Becky and Baker and I did All My Sons, and mm. um, we, we, that was an incredible experience. And when you do theater with people, I mean, you really become a family. And um, so it, I, I was so happy that she did this, and we had, it was great working with her. Um, and really... She was so funny. It, she's the woman in the train scene who basically pushes back. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, such a pro. Um, and then Derek, Luke, we did Pieces of April together a long time ago. And Clap for Pieces of April. <laughs> such a good movie. Thank okay. you. And we were, 
I mean, I think it was his second job. I mean, I was brand new at the time too. And I, I had always remembered he was so nice and easy to work with and kind. Um, and so I reached out after 20 years and I was like, I have this script and, and he was so just as lovely and, and he was very collaborative as well. I mean, I, John was not as complicated in my draft and he got to, um, up to upstate and we started rehearsals and we sat and we went through and he was like, I really think it's like this. And they had this history mm -hmm. and blah, blah. And like, those are the things that I love mm -hmm. because then you get to the set and you know what the other, like, you know what you're going for mm -hmm. because there's like, you know, you've talked about it. There's depth there. And, um, and it just makes it really fun because these are really talented people. It's like, I want to experience all of it. I want all the ideas. I mean, the, the sidekick best friend is Zosha Mamet. Like how much do we love her? You know? I know. And, and I really feel like one of the things that you did, and I'm, I want to ask you, do you think that being both an, an actor and a director helps you do this? Like, I feel like there wasn't any two dimensional character in this. Like e there was no bad guys or no good guys. Everybody was gorgeously complex. Mm. Well, thank you. I mean, I, we, I, I feel like that's, yeah, that's how life is sticky, right? Yeah, especially um, over the last two years. Yeah, and and I think people probably want, you know, you, you want the villain, but th that's not really true. John isn't a villain. Right, exactly. And, you know, and, and, um, and so, and Zosha, she... <laughs> is so funny, but she also has this vulnerability underneath it all, which is why we we just want to watch her and we laugh because it, there's just like that, like when she's talking about, well, just, you know, why don't you come home and we'll make rosé and she's cutting out all of that. She's making her collage and you just kind of go, she's lonely. She yeah. wants her friend back. This is what you captured in this movie is that we all found our soft underbelly during quarantine and during COVID. And I feel like you made a movie about that soft space, basically. And it was really beautifully still and beautifully mm -hmm. quiet. Like, can you talk a little bit about the choices you made in terms of cinematography and even sound design? Like, it's it feels almost more like a 70s film or a film to me than a, like a contemporary movie in a good way, just to Thank be clear. Thank you. Well, um, Martin Vian was, is our cinematographer and, um, we were referencing movies like In the Mood for Love, even though you wouldn't necessarily see that, but it was that color palette. And this, the shot when um, June and Charlie come in after they he drives off and comes back, and then they're kind of like, okay, we're going to be together. This is going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> and we were so excited that day because we had the, like, the camera moved over here. She, like... And Jim walks over here and then he pulls his back and then they go upstairs and like you just see like her hand on the on the wall. And it was like we were always trying to find sort of those ways to tell the story without it being too still or too much movement. Like I, I wanted the camera to be more invisible. Mm. Um, and then the color palette, I um, I was looking at the invisible life um, that the the Brazilian movie. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and because it, it was just so beautifully saturated and I kind of wanted, I wanted that as well because I wanted it to be very pleasing because I, it was like the pandemic's already bleak. So let's like, let's just have that. Right. Um, so, but my team is really, really talented. And our, your, our and your editor too. Yeah. Sandra Adair is great. And our production designer is incredible. Michael Fitzgerald. <laughs> So we, yeah, I mean, we worked hard on like <laughs> the wall having, he painted the walls red and like we just cr tried to have like fun with the design. So wait, just to be clear, where this was second year of COVID. This was, you shot this in 2021 or? Yeah. So people were, am I right? Ecstatic to be working. Ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great time. Because yeah. it was like everybody wanted to work too. Um, but also our crew, we had a lot of young people. Mm. And that was really a special thing because there was that energy of I'm making a movie and I want to be really good and I'm learning every day. And it's like that gives you energy because it's like, yeah, I mean, 
we're all figuring this out together. It was like camp. Um, yeah. Well, and I think that sort of works because you're dealing with these really heavy stuff. You don't shy away from the big stuff. Here, you don't, you ever, actually, interestingly to me, like as a director, you never shy away from the big stuff. Like all we had, it's the same thing. But somehow you still seem to highlight joy, you know? And I, I, it's interesting to hear that you fostered, it seems like you deliberately fostered this really positive, collaborative dynamic on the set in order to, is that is that an important value that you always look for? Are you doing that right? You're working on a new film right now, right? Or you just finished one? I just finished one called Rare Objects that we shot here in, in New York and um, based on a book um, by Kathleen Tesoro. Hmm. And it act, the book takes place in the 30s and we um, made it into modern day. Um, and it's Julia Mayorga, Derek Luke again. Yeah. Um, Alan Cumming, um, uh, David Alexander Flynn, and myself. Um, and that was, yes, to answer your question, um, I find that I do best working when I feel good and mm -hmm. I feel like I like everybody to feel inspired. I'm, I'm always trying to like daily make sure like, okay, what scenes do we have going? Do I have any like picture like where are my inspiration photos like would that help that actor maybe I'll do maybe I should give them this today just because sometimes that those little things can help them in a way that's saying like oh say it like this or mm -hmm. you know go like that like I kind of want it to come from deeper so I'm I am it's it is it, yes I I like to pay I, I'm always paying attention to everybody and like are they doing okay? Like, what's going on there? Like, what's it like to direct yourself under those auspices? Then, um, it's it's challenging only because I'm always thinking about the clock. So I'm like, okay, I don't want to take up too much time because I know what we have to get, and so I really like over the weekend. I'm always like, okay, what do I have? What you know? And but I also depend on like. My really good friend is my production designer. Oh, that's helpful. So I'm like, you got to watch this one. <laughs> and then he'll be like, do it again. <laughs> You're almost it's there. It's so important to have <laughs> such friends. Yeah. Yeah. You I have to. Um, yeah. I love that. I mean, you have this knack for sympathetic portrayals of complex women. Like at the beginning of this film, I was like, are we going to like this woman? <laughs> Just being honest. But that's something that I feel like you earn with us and you do that a lot. And it sounds like it, that's partly, I think, because you work on it beforehand with this diligence. You know, I mean, yeah. is that something that you de also deliberately cultivate is the I mean, I hate when people say unlikable women because your characters are very likable, but they are complex. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't worry about likable. I yeah, think why it's would just, you? It's yeah, a dumb I, phrase. Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not because we all have to live. <laughs> maneuver our way through the world yeah. and being likable helps um but uh, what she said <laughs> um but i think it's like trying to find yeah the 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 truth of the person and not being afraid of showing the pain of the person and i remember during the pandemic maybe one month it was popular to be vulnerable and then that went away yeah that was Remember cute that? everybody was like that's cute <laughs> okay whatever let's yeah. have cocktails on zoom <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> all right so last question is is um the person singing over the credits was that a person related to you <laughs> yes that is um my daughter suri Yay. and um how amazing is that yeah i um thank you um I asked her to do it because I said I always want the best. I always want to work with the best, so I'm going to you first. And she was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, it took me, I actually thought it was you. I don't know if anyone else thought oh, that. Oh, no, like, I wish I could sing like that. No, no, no. It was really wonderful. Well, thank you so much for thank making you. this beautiful movie and talking with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.